It's not the government, the church, or even our schools. The home is the actual foundation of all societies, and it is steadily deteriorating. Do you realize how valuable your home is? Are you willing to do the homework required to be an influencer, a home influencer? Welcome to Homework with Kim. I'm Kimona Ferguson, and together we take a candid look at our homes and the work we need to do within its four walls and in our families in order to fulfill our God-given assignments. Just look around, you see it. We have some homework to do. So let's get started. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Homework with Kim. Thank you so much for joining me here where we take a candid look at our homes and the work we need to do within its four walls. To ensure that at the end of a long, hard day, when our heads hit the pillow, we can truly declare home, sweet home. I'm your host, Kim, and we are here at the end of August, the end of Emancipence Month for Jamaica, land we love. And based on the feedback I've received From episode 6, I've decided to close this month's podcast series by doing somewhat of a part 2 of Jamaica 60, Reigniting Our Nation for Greatness, where we asked the question and looked at some hard truths concerning where we are as a nation and whether or not we are really on our way to greatness. And I thank you again for those of you who keep coming back episode after episode, week after week. Thank you so much for your support. And most appropriately, I'm going to begin this podcast episode based on what we're going to be talking about with a prayer. Eternal Father, bless our land. Guard us with thy mighty hand. Keep us free from evil powers. Be our light through countless hours. To our leaders, grace defender, grants true wisdom from above. Justice, truth be ours forever, Jamaica. Amen. You heard correctly. That was a prayer. Our Jamaica national anthem is in fact a prayer to 
the Heavenly Father. And that's where we want to center our attention today. I know we sing it quite often and I know we used to love to sing it at the opening of a new school week on a first Sunday at church, of course, at the opening of most special events, whether they are official events or formal government ceremonies, and even in informal settings such as in the movie theater like Carib 5 just before the start of a movie. So it's fair to say that we are more than familiar as Jamaicans with our national anthem. We're familiar with it as a song, as a melodious tune, and of course, one that we love to sing and hear as we feel that tremendous sense of pride when we hear it played at any athletic competition where we, the black, green and gold, have come out on top. And as the flag blows in the background, the tune and singing of our national anthem, we stand proud in fact, there seems to be no prouder people to be found. And some of us may even go as far as saying, I can't imagine being anything but Jamaican. Because we are God bless country. But friends, our anthem is so much more than a feel-good tune. Have you ever gave thought to the fact that it is quite possible, to, and I may go on to say that it is quite likely that the reason why 60 years later, with all that we see happening daily in Jamaica, all that concerns us, and rightfully so, the only reason we can talk about any greatness and not just a great mess is because the writer of our national anthem, Hugh Sherlock, wrote the Jamaican National Anthem, entitled Jamaica, Land We Love, he was wise enough to pen it as a prayer. Let me say that again. He was wise enough to pen the Jamaican National Anthem as a prayer to the Almighty God. And the Houses of Parliament, who chose to select it as the most appropriate song for marking our independence, also made the best choice. Perhaps they themselves prayed for wisdom from above in making the selection. In any event, it would be 60 years of us singing our national anthem, 60 years of consciously and for many of us unconsciously calling on the Eternal Father over and over, asking Him to bless or land. From the babies to the elderly, 60 years of praying for Jamaica, land we love every time the anthem was sung. And so what this has meant for us and what it should continue to mean for us as a nation is the fact that the Jamaica National Anthem is in fact a prayer, a petition to the Eternal and Heavenly Father for courage, vision, and wisdom, as well as justice for all. That is a fact. And so 60 years later, reigniting a nation for greatness, we must consciously revisit this prayer, as it also petitions the Father to be our light, through countless hours. And additionally, it makes a spiritual appeal that to our leaders, the great defender, that's capital G for great, capital D for defender, would grant true wisdom from above. Friends, we have every reason to pray like this now, maybe even more so now than when these lyrics were first put to paper and to a tune, maybe more so now, August 2022, than August 1962. And you may or may not have noticed that on this journey and on this road to reigniting 
the nation for greatness. Our leaders have seemingly left God and God's wisdom out of the plan. Sure, we sing, they sing, knowledge send us, Heavenly Father. But it's one thing to sing about it. But it appears that we over a time have become a nation who has forgotten God. As a result, we have witnessed and continue to witness unavoidably the messes of our nation's government, economy, legal snares, propaganda, and so much more. You see, we must understand that when a nation forsakes God, it will necessarily have a future that none of us want to experience. And so it urges us to be a common people who speak out and take action so that we will in fact have God on our side. And what about our national pledge? I am not even sure if it is still recited in schools today. For those of us who have examined our national pledge, we would have realized that it's not just a meaningless recitation, but it is in fact a vow. It's an oath that we have taken. Now listen to me. If you are married or have ever been to a wedding, you would have heard your marriage officer pronounce these words. He would have said, therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purpose for which it was instituted by God. In other words, the oaths or vows you are about to make is no joke thing. That is, once you get God involved, and how, friends, does the Jamaica National Pledge begin? You know it. Before God and all mankind. Well, friends, from before we knew what these words meant, we said, Before God and all mankind, I pledge the love and loyalty of my heart, the wisdom and courage of my mind, the strength and vigor of my body in the service of my fellow citizens. I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood, and peace, to work diligently and creatively, to think generously and honestly, so that Jamaica may, under God, increase in beauty, fellowship, and prosperity, and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. Before God and all mankind, friends, the vows we make are highly important to God. As Jamaicans, the vows we made are highly important to God, especially since in saying our pledge, they are made in his name. Because when we take an oath, we call upon his presence. We said before God, we're calling him as a witness. So we must be sure to take only oaths that are truthful because once we take them, we must always keep them. In the Bible, in Ecclesiastes 4, verse 4 to 5, it says, When you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better to not make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Now, because as fallen human beings, we have a propensity to lie. 
oaths and vows really became a necessary part of human society. And they are incredibly important to God. And as we just saw in Ecclesiastes 4, God would prefer that we not take any vows at all than that we take an oath and then break it again before God and all mankind. Let's continue our examination of the oath we have taken before God and all mankind. It continues, before God and all mankind, I pledge the love and loyalty of my heart, the wisdom and courage of my mind, the strength and vigor of my body in the service of my fellow citizens. Let's backtrack to these two words. I pledge. Another weighty word, pledge, meaning to formally or seriously commit to providing or performing something. The pronoun I makes it personal. Notice it implies that it is the individual, the Jamaican citizen. Each of us individually are committing to provide the following. The love and loyalty of our hearts. The wisdom and courage of our minds. The strength and vigor of our bodies. But why? For what reason are we making this pledge? Why are we giving these things? To what end are we pledging these things? Our pledge continues. In the service of my fellow citizens. My fellow citizens, not in the service of self, but in the service of others. Imagine that for 60 years, we have pledged as a nation to serve our fellow people with all of our love, wisdom, courage, strength, and vigor. Do we practice that? I think not. But I believe that greatness cannot be achieved as a nation. We cannot be reignited as a nation without this missing element. Jamaica, we must serve as we have pledged to do for decades. Our fellow citizens with all that we are and all that we have. Our national pledge or our national oath continues. I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood, and peace, to work diligently and creatively, to think generously and honestly. Again, two words of great importance. I promise. In other words, what I'm about to say to you is guaranteed this is a guarantee that something will be done or that a specific thing will happen we have made a commitment by way of our tongues over the decades that have passed to speak up for justice we have said i promise to stand up for justice brotherhood and peace to labor hard and creatively to think generously in other words to think liberally and to think Honestly, why though? Because it's easy? Because it has a nice little ring to it? No. But it continues to tell us why. So that Jamaica may under God increase in beauty, fellowship and prosperity. And then go on to play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. Friends, we aim to do all of this so that Jamaica can play her role in furthering 
the welfare of the entire human race, all while growing in beauty, friendship, and wealth under the guidance of God. Again, Jamaica is under God and not the other way around. And our national anthem and pledge penned decades ago underscores this fact. So any reignition for greatness cannot then take place where God is not guarding and guiding. I said it before, God would rather have us ignore oaths altogether, not, not to bother make any pledge, not to bother taking any oath, not to bother taking any vow, than to have us make a vow only to break it. Have us make a pledge only to break it. When we delay paying this pledge, paying this vow, we make ourselves to be fools. Whenever we do not keep our vows, we have really ceased to fear God's judgment on those who make their pledge. The Jamaica National Pledge is an oath. Now we know none of us will ever keep all our vows perfectly on this side of life. And even for Jamaica, we all individually and as a nation have broken or national oath, or national pledge before God. The same oath, the same pledge that we called on God to witness when we said, before God and all mankind, I pledge, we have broken that oath. But there is still hope for Jamaica land we love because when we break our pledge, we have an advocate with our eternal Father. So if we would only confess our sins as a nation, ask his forgiveness and turn to him, we would find, friends, that our Heavenly Father will be that light that we have asked him to be in even singing of the national anthem when we said, Be our light. Through countless hours, let us turn to him, ask his forgiveness for breaking the pledge we have taken before him. Jamaica, if we are to be reignited for greatness, we must return to our great God and ask him to again bless Jamaica land. We love. Happy 60th anniversary with Jamaica. We ignite this nation for greatness. As Phoebe said, let's reignite this nation for greatness. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Homework with Kim. I invite you to follow me on social media at Homework with Kim on Instagram or at Skymona on Instagram. Have a great week and until we meet again, just look around. You see it. We have some homework to do. So let's get started. Let's get started.